Colonel Perkins, thank you so much for joining us at IAVs this year. Um, you did speak today on the subject of the future Army. Um, how will the current plans and programs overseen by the US Army make it the most ready and able fighting force in the coming years? Well, the one thing we're trying to do initially is really define the problem out there. So we're looking out 2025 to 2050 to make sure we have a good understanding of all the variables. I mean, we're not trying to predict the future, we're trying to understand it and then make sure those fairly well-defined problems then start driving our solution. And what we find out is the complexity of the world, the rate of change, the proliferation of technology are going to happen at a rate that's really unprecedented. And so as we are building our army, at least from a material point of view, what we're trying to focus in is developing systems that you can constantly innovate systems of where you can constantly upgrade the technology and then most importantly developing soldiers that can use that technology better than anybody else. So when it comes to the pillars of training and doctrine, what challenges are you facing currently but more importantly what are the opportunities? One of the challenges is our current systems which built the legacy force that we had in the Cold War don't necessarily lend themselves to quickly adapting to the future, whether it's our acquisition processes, whether it's the way we do requirements. We tend to be very stovepiped on specific weapon systems and the funding tends to occur that way. Therefore, what we have to do is break down some of these stovepipes and say, you know, these solutions will be multi-domain. They'll be cross-functional and therefore we have to develop multiple capabilities in multiple domains to provide the solution to one problem in one domain. In what ways are coalition efforts and lesson sharing efforts translating into helping you achieve those goals? Well, one of the advantages we think the U.S. will have is wherever we go to war, whoever that adversary is, we will have more coalition members than they will. So that's, that's one of the strengths, I think, of the U.S. and Western way of war is that we come together in a large coalition. So what this is an opportunity for and it's been apparent at this conference is everybody's kind of coming to grips with the same time that the future is changing. So by thinking about it similarly and moving together forward, I think we'll be able to leverage the coalitions that we have already. And of course, at IAVs, we have a huge amount of input from the commercial sector. How does the industry bridge between what Tradoc's doing and between what's happening on the front line? Well, that's one of the advantages of um, seminars like this is that we, we, the military, get to describe our challenges that we see out there from an operational point of view. And then our industry partners can give us an idea of what is in the realm of the possible, what technology is out there. And then as we give them requirements, they can give us possible solutions. We can kind of, for lack of a better term, grade that solution and say, hey, that, that's within the problem set that we're looking at. And so it helps us move together at the same time rather than sequentially. It's been absolutely fascinating hearing you talk today. Thank you very much for your time. All right, appreciate it and appreciate everyone that's come together to pull this off. Thank you, sir. Thanks.